and love this That's woman right. will not take your damn hair. Right. So leave her alone. Right. Oh, So let's bring on our assistant minister here at Muhammad Khan, Brother Arthur Muhammad. And I bear witness that Muhammad is his messenger. Allow me to greet you, brothers and sisters, with the greeting words of peace. Assalamu alaikum. Assalam, sir. Looks so good just to see your smiling faces here today. You look very good. The energy is thick. We have a wonderful program yeah. prepared for you. Let us give our previous speakers a round of applause. <laughs> Respect, protect, and elevate the black woman. Had we been on our job, black man respecting the black woman, then black woman would not have participated in that Me Too rally mm. where black men have abused them and they walked in shame and in silence with the pain of rape, the pain of abuse, mm. holding that on for years many of that turning into homosexuality as well as suicide, as well as not being a fitting mate for the next man that sincerely loved them. If we was on our post of respecting, protecting, and elevating the black woman, then our woman would be more whole. Right. So we got a lot of work and repair to do mm. to make better families. Somebody say true, true. True, true, true. true. All right. I want to speak to you today about what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us. In keeping with that theme of surgery, we have to replace the mind. Hmm. Some people say, well, I'm going to the mosque. And then another person will say back to you, they're going to brainwash you. Come on. You say, absolutely right. <laughs> because our mind, Come on. our brains have been stained. Mm. with the coloring mm. of a white supremacist doctrine of religion. Come on. Right. And we seem not to be able to shake the stain away because the stain is deep-rooted, it's soaked in to the fabric of our brain. In other words, we think in the context of our enemy's teaching, and as long as we do that, we will never be free and independent. Right. So here it is. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that whenever and wherever I see the black man and the black woman, I'm looking at what? God. God. Come on. Damn, that was hard. <laughs> that defies the Christian teachings that we are sinners by nature. Mm. See, when you say we are sinners by nature, you excuse away the sins that you do, and you excuse the desire to be perfect. Listen, well, ain't nobody perfect than Jesus. Well, open up the book of Job. The book he, of Job says that there was a man from us, and his name was Job, and he was perfect. Come on. See, we got to shake off the teachings of white supremacy that's in our mind because it's short-circuiting our ultimate goal, which is to be one with Almighty God. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. nature. Right. But guess what? Jesus taught the same thing. Yes, he did. There were a bunch of Jews <laughs> Listen. that were accusing Jesus 
of blasphemy. Right, right. Come on. Because Jesus would always use these words, my father. He would always talk about the power that he had because he was in tune with his father. And so the Jews said, we accuse you of blasphemy. We accuse you of trying to say that you are God. And so Jesus says, isn't it written in your law that we are all God? What law are you talking about, Jesus? He's talking about the law of the Old Testament. Right. For in the Old Testament, the prophet, um, come on now, David. David the David the son. The prophet David, hundreds of years before Jesus said, ye are all gods, the children of the most high God. So don't try to overanalyze the teachings of the honorable Elijah Muhammad because he said that the black man is God. It is in line with the teachings of the prophet. We are divine beings. Let's go further. The book of Corinthians says, don't you know that your body hmm. is the temple of the Holy Spirit, Listen. which is in you, whom you receive of God? You are not your own. Hey. Don't you know Come on. that your body Listen. is the temple, the home, the mosque, the church, the edifice of the Holy Spirit? which is from God. Our flesh is not God, for our flesh is born or created, and our flesh will disintegrate. Is that right or wrong? Right. But what is in us this is God's spirit the potential to mimic and mirror the God who created himself out of triple darkness. That's right. Are y'all with me? That's right. So your Holy Spirit or God's spirit is inside of you. And that's why, Brother John, when someone dies, you say the spirit returns to the essence or it returns to the source where it once came, which is Almighty God Himself. That's right. The scripture goes on to say not only is your body the temple of the Holy Spirit, which you got from God, it says you are not. Your own. Mm. Let's think yeah. about this. Come on. Go ahead. We got to understand who we are hmm. as well as whose we are. Right. Like that. Like I that. remember one time I was driving, coming from the mosque. It was a blessed day because my daughter reminds me, my daughter, my oldest daughter was about six years old and I had a couple of brothers, a couple of guests from the mosque and I'm driving up uh, 7th Avenue, going towards 155th Street, and I saw this black man beating this black woman, and I couldn't take it, brothers. Right. I put my car in park on 7th Avenue, and I told the brothers, roll out! And we rolled out. I kept my daughter in the car, locked the door, took my keys. And I said, black man, take your hands off that woman, now! He said, yo, that's my woman. I said, that's Allah's woman. That's right. That's right. A lot worse. A lot worse. You don't belong to yourself. If you don't own your woman, nor do you own your man. Are y'all with me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He unleashed the sister, and I told the sister to run. And we grabbed the up and gave him an offer he couldn't refuse because he on Facebook Live. <laughs> But that's an example of protecting, respecting, yes, and elevating the black woman. Right. Is that right or wrong? Yes, See, the white men don't yes, like sir. black men that stand on principles and stand for their people. Right, right, right. We are dangerous. We are, what Malcolm said, too black. Too strong. Too strong. Come on. Is that right or wrong? Yes, sir. You don't belong to yourself. Mm. That's why Allah would be justified in taking our lives every day that we fall short and we fall short every day. And that's why we should not be afraid or too lazy to put our mug to our prayer rug, to make prayer to Allah for his beneficence. Brother, it's natural. So it's poison ivy. You ain't smoking no poison ivy. That's right. That's right. Is that right? That's right. Come on. It's natural. And yes, weed does have medicinal purposes, and then nobody go fake sickness. 
Because we quick to fake a sickness. Is that right? Someone say, yo, I've got two tickets to go to California. <coughs> Boss, <coughs> I'm sick. And then you go on Facebook and Instagram and Snapchat, taking pictures of you in your vacation to California, and your boss happens to be one of your friends, and you get fired. <laughs> Don't right. fake sickness because right. you want to smoke weed. Are y'all with me? <laughs> See, when you smoke weed, the process is you put fire to the weed. Is that right? Come on. Is that right? Come on. <laughs> And when you inhale, yes, you get the properties of the marijuana, but you also get a byproduct of the burning, which is carbon monoxide. Right? So you're not just a weed smoker, you're a carbon monoxide smoker. Well, brother, what's carbon monoxide? It's the same thing that comes out of the exhaust pipe of a vehicle. So if you want some carbon monoxide, just put your lips to the pipe of my car, I'll get you high for free. I'm not advocating marijuana, but if you want to do it, put it in like a tea bag. No, nah, man, it don't make me feel the same. You're a carbon monoxide thing. What else do we put in our system? Alcohol. Please. Jamie Foxx had that song, blame it on the alcohol. Why blame it on the alcohol? Because alcohol makes you act other than itself. What is it about black people that we want to get high, high, high every day? It's the number one recreation. Come on. And it, it is surpassed tag. Hmm. It has surpassed um, cops and robbers. It, is, it has surpassed Pac-Man. Come on. Nintendo, getting high is the number one sport in the black community. Our young people is coming to school high. Right. Leaving school early to get high. Right. Coming home late because they was in the park getting high. Hey. What is it about high? Hmm. It is the pleasure in having a sense of consciousness that is so full of euphoria because there's no euphoria in this world. This mm. world is a world of disappointment. This world is a world of unfulfilled expectation. This world is a world of disappointment. And because our people don't have access to pleasure moments naturally, they get high, high, high. This is why we want you to come to the mosque. Come on. Because the greatest pleasure principle is being in tune with the most high God. I know it may sound corny to many, but I'm telling you, when you have a relationship with the most on, high, on, the on. desire for getting high goes away, and you have a pleasure that has unspeakable joy. Woo. Are y'all with me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, crazy. Oh, crazy. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan teaches us that there are levels of pleasure. He teaches us that the highest level of pleasure is when a person is in tune with God. Mm. He said that the second highest form of pleasure is the pleasure that is derived when a creative mind is allowed to see their creation which starts in their mind manifest. So when an architect makes blueprints of a building that he has in his mind and he finally sees that building go up in completion, that inner joy is unspeakable. It's like a rap artist that starts with a thought in his mind to make a record about whatever and just to be in here, hear, hear it played on the radio. It's a feeling that you can't even describe. The next level of joy is the joy that we have with the love of the brotherhood. I'm not talking about when brothers are together even though our wives are home and they are pleasing to the sight. When the brothers is together, that type of joy right, right there right. will make us come home late because we're having so much fun with the brothers. And the sisters have that too when they're amongst themselves. That's why you can't get them out of MTT class on time and the brothers be on close like <laughs> But when you hanging out with 
with your brothers. Come on. Working out with your brothers. Come on. Right. Cooking with your sisters. It's a beautiful, joyous thing, and that's why we want you to join the nation of Islam because we say that we got the greatest brotherhood and the greatest sisterhood known as the name. Allah I know some of y'all listen to Drake, y'all be like, yo, no new friends, no new friends. <laughs> no, nah, we need new friends. Yes, sir. Because if you're the smartest person in your circle, you need to change your circle. Right. If you got the best ideas, the richest person in your circle, you need to change your circle. Right. And see, this is the circle of the gods. Right. This is the circle of people who are trying and working hard to perfect themselves. Right. You see, one of the reasons why a lot of people don't even want to admit that their God is because we have to admit that we have failed in all of our pursuits. Are y'all with me? Mm. Come on. Hey. Wanna let that marinate? There you go. Some of us don't have confidence in our own selves. Listen. Because every time we start a project, every time we start a diet, every time we come up with a good idea, it frustrates and fails before we even actually put the plan into action. We don't even believe ourselves. Am I right or wrong? Yes, sir. But when you're reminded that I'm God, mm. potentially, mm -hmm. I'm perfect, potentially, and to reach your potential, it takes a lot of work. Sure. It takes a lot of dedication. It takes a lot of discipline. Discipline meaning I do the same thing the same way. Not only when I want to do it, but I'm disciplined even when I don't want to do it. Right. There's a saying that practice makes perfect, but the Honorable Minister on, Louis Farrakhan teaches us that perfect practice makes perfect. That's what right. think about. Evaluate yourself, brother. Go ahead, go ahead. Evaluate yourself, sister. Are you satisfied <laughs> with yourself? Don't answer the question. <laughs> but if you're not satisfied with every aspect, every avenue of yourself, your dissatisfaction, our dissatisfaction, my dissatisfaction should convert into change. Right, right. Is right. that right or wrong? All progress is not change, Come on. but all change is progress. See, when you come to the mosque, you're not going to hear, oh, God is in the sky. He's smiling on you. You're going to hear tough truth. Right. You're going to take an aspirin that's not coated with sugar. Come on, man. You're going to taste the bitter truth. What bitters is good for you. That's right. Because it reminds us of what we have to do. Because we don't want you to come to the mosque and just say, oh man, that music was banging, brother. The sister that I was sitting next to was banging, brother. Man, did you see the muscles on that? No, that's why we separate you. Come on. So that you can listen to the word unadulterated. That's right. This is a very unique seating arrangement. Particularly if you came in with someone that let you wait, go, wait, wait. Don't worry, sister. He'll be with you at the end. Because it forces us to do a couple of things. It forces us to sit next to somebody who we would normally not sit next to. I've used this example often, but recently I went to a Knicks game in the city and I watched it come to life. I live in Mount Vernon, which is Westchester County, just about eight blocks from uh, the Bronx, which is New York City. So I got on the train at 241st, which is the first or last stop on the two train, depending on if you uptown or downtown. And so when I got on the train, I was the first person on the train. The next couple of people, they found a very remote spot to sit down, far from somebody else. And people only sat next to you when there were no other seats. Right. If you got on a train or a bus and someone sat next to you and there was a whole bunch of other seats, you would look at them like, yo, Negro, what y'all, man, what you sitting next to me for? Is that right? Yes, sir. That's funny. Because we're not used to right. black folks showing love, showing interest. In fact, we're so defensive minded. We're looking at, yo, what is their angle? We're not comfortable, is that right? In fact, let's do something right now that's going to bust that up. Look to your left, look to your right, and just say peace. 
busting it all up. This is black love, y'all. This is not anti-white. This is pro-black. There's nothing wrong with being pro-black. There's nothing wrong with being pro-black. There's nothing wrong with being pro-black. But we gotta know what black is. Come on. Because black is just not a color. Right. Our color is not gonna get us entry into the hereafter. Right. Our color is not sufficient to save our lives just because I'm black. Right. You got to be black and white. So black is color culture. You got to be tied to your African culture, which it all came from, even though at the at one time the planet or the continent was right. not called Africa. Right, that's right. Did you hear what I that's said? Right. That's right. We're not African American. Right. Make it play. What are you talking about, brother? Yeah. Jesse Jackson said we're African American. <laughs> well, he ain't our leader. That's right. Come when on. you say I'm African American, right. you're paying homage to the white man. Right. Because Africa was named after a Portuguese European white man named Leo Africanus. That's right. Leo Africanus was known for making the topography or the map of the northern rim of Africa for the Europeans when it was time for them to start their exploration. So they said, you know what, since you made the map of northern Africa, we're gonna name the entire continent after you. And America is named after who? Americos Vespucci. You know that's a Caucasian, right? <laughs> so when you call yourself proudly, I am, an African American, you're saying I'm a white man, white man, but you black as the ace of spades. So we identify ourselves as black. But in truth, at one time, we didn't call ourselves black. At one time, all there was was black. But when other Colors began to come into the scene for identity purposes. We referred to us as we referred to ourselves as black. What was we? We were the gods. Right. That right. spirit, that nature that has no color, that dwelled inside of the original man. This is how we acted. This is how we conducted ourselves as a righteous human beings. To my young brothers and young sisters, I know you reject religion. And Islam is not a Make religion. A Make a the Holy Quran says, this day I have perfected my favor. And no, I have perfected your faith and completed my favor and have chosen for you Islam and as a religion. That's right. You remember in school, a simile was a word that had like or as Come on. preceded. Islam is not a religion, but there was a time that we didn't have Bible. Come on. There was a time we didn't have the Holy Quran. There was a time that we didn't have prophets. Why? Come on. Because we didn't need them. Right. We only need prophets. We only need scripture when we fall away from the right path of God. Right. And the fact that we fell uh, from the path of God, then all of God's messengers and prophets were mercies for us because they wanted us to get back on the right path. Is right. that right or wrong? That's right. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is a mercy from God. That's right. Because all praise is yes. for God. Yes, he is. He reaches people from the sweets to the streets. Yes, he does. He reaches people from the spoken word to the tweets. I know more. I know it. I know it. <laughs> But to save a wretch like me, <laughs> the way I used to think Come on. and drink, <laughs> the way I used to prowl, the way I used to get down in this concrete jungle, I know he's a bad man. Not bad meaning bad, but bad meaning good. That's right. Of the <laughs> yeah, it is. Run DMC. <laughs> Go ahead, brother. And guess what? I'm not the only one who has that testimony. Yes, sir. About how a word found us. Right. And where that word found us, but sparked something in our mind right. to begin to change the way we was thinking. That's right. To the degree that we say, I'm not going to dress like I used to dress. Right. Right. Come on. Sister, I'm not going to wear that skinny mini. Right. 
I'm not gonna wear that shirt like I'm from Cleavage, oh, I mean Cleveland, Ohio. <laughs> I'm going by the right size, not the tight size. Great. Praise be to Allah. <laughs> Brother, I'm going to put the gun down. Come on. I'm going to put the knife down. Watch this one. This is a big one right here. I'm going to stop lying. Great. Great. <laughs> Yo, somebody, listen, if, if I say something that's true, just say true, true. Watch this one. We were some good liars. <laughs> we laugh at it, but man, we, we, we laughing at being the devil. Because the devil is the master of lies. He's the arch deceiver. But we bragged on our immorality. Right. Because we took life as a game. It's not a game. Right. Life is real. And the decisions that we make, brothers and sisters, impact our family as well as ourselves. Right. Right. So why not be on a lost team? Come on. Why not, why not be down with the most high? Go ahead. Accept God and be yourself. Come on. What is your own self? My own self is not a fly cat. Go ahead now. My, 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 my own self is not cuz. My own self is not homie. Our own self is being a righteous Muslim. A righteous Muslim. A righteous Muslim. I ain't no Muslim. I ain't no Muslim, bro. Well, what is a Muslim? Good question. Good question. A Muslim is a person. Are you a person? Yes, sir. All right, so we good. So you a person who submits to do the will of God. That's all. That's it. Are you that? Yes, sir. You a Muslim. <laughs> Sisters, not only are you Muslims, you are Muharibis. Mm. What you say, brother? I know Muharibis. <laughs> In Spanish, the word Muharibis means woman. Come on. Don't let the language of Muslim, which is an Arabic word, trip you out. That's right. A muharis is a woman in another language. Hey. A Muslim is a righteous person hey. in a, another language. Can't you be that? Hmm. Good teacher. Is that right? Go ahead. Sure. Yeah, we accept the, 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 the title nigga. Come on. I'm a bad nigga. Go ahead. <laughs> Come on. And that's a title that does not define our nature. Right. It's a title that defines the way our Caucasian slave masters thought about us. I tell the young students in my uh, school that I go to when they call each other my nigga. What up, my nigga? I said, brother, you own slaves? Because that's the way the slave master, that's my nigga right there. <laughs> well, that's my nigga. So when you say that language, right. you're going back to slavery. No more slavery. It's time for us to be masters. It's time for, uh, you know what? The only way that we're going to master is if we unite. The only way that we're going to master is if we shed all of the devilistic ways out of our life. Even if those ways give us pleasure. Everything that's forbidden, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan teaches us, has a pleasure value attached to it. That's right. So I know why you get high, because you like the way it feels. Great. How you feeling? Yo, yeah, I'm nice, yo. <laughs> I know you they smile. <laughs> you, ever, you ever see people, is that first, is everybody all right? Yes, sir. You ever see people who got high the night before? Yo, what you do last night? Yo, man, yo, man. yo, we got hot. Yo, it's a pleasure moment. Come on, come on. Is that right? Yes, sir. People used to tell me, man, I used to get, I don't even tell you how many blunts I used to smoke. I used to drink. We got to, we got to get that excitement. Come on. Come about on. the devil's world and the devil's society and the devil's civilization. We got to get that out of our mind. Come on, come on. He's a distraction to us. Brother Sunni, I heard you talk earlier about social media. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad told his followers in the 40s, 
He said, one day hmm. you will have the devil in your living room. That's right. That's right. This is before the TV really came out. That's right. And it was like, nah, we ain't invite no white folks over our house. We miss it all. But when we turned on our television and we got who was that who was that um reality show about those 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 white teenagers uh Snooky and them um Jersey Shore Jersey Shore oh, okay. The devil was in our living room. Right. All right. <laughs> and now it's worse. Big job. He ain't just in the living room, he in our bathroom. Some people can't even have a private moment in the bathroom sitting down without being on their phone. Come on. Come on. Uh-oh. That's it. We can't even have a conversation at the dinner table. Come on. Everybody got their phone out. <laughs> Come on, think about it. Am I right or wrong? <laughs> Children can't even learn in school. Right? Because they sitting down and under their desk. <laughs> Come on. We're distracted. Make a claim. <clears throat> Somebody got to call us back. Mm. Right? <clears throat> Listen. And we have one that's calling us back. Yes, we do. But we're not listening. That's right. We're fighting hard in this last day to wake our people up. Yes, sir. Because our people go back to sleep. And I have a mighty person who blows a trumpet on behalf of the number one trumpeteer, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, who is going to introduce our keynote speaker. He's not only the minister of mosque number seven, but he's responsible for 18 other mosques in the East Coast. He's our big brother and our friend. Let us receive our beloved brother minister, Abdul Hafiz Muhammad. All praise belongs to Allah, the Lord of the world. To Allah alone do I submit and seek refuge in. It is he who is the revealer of all truths, the sender of all prophets, and the creator of all living things. We thank him for Moses and the Torah, Jesus, the Messiah, and the Gospel, and Muhammad, peace be upon him, and the revelation of the Holy Quran. As a student of the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, the eternal leader of the nation of Islam, it brings me great honor and privilege that we would stand before you, our beloved brothers and sisters, with the reality and the knowledge of God in the person of Master Fahd Muhammad, whom we refer to as the great Mahdi, or the self-guided one, who came and raised up the honorable Elijah Muhammad, and made him his divine messenger, his Messiah, and now his exalted Christ. We are thankful to Allah and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad for giving unto us their spiritual son. Two men that produced the son without the agency of a woman Amen. through the mind of God and the mind of his messenger, Elijah Muhammad. Yes. And we as a people have given birth to this son of man that is in our midst. I speak of none other than the great preacher of freedom, justice, and equality, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrell. I wish to greet you, our beloved brothers and sisters here at Muhammad Mosque, number seven, New York City, the East Coast Regional Headquarters of the Nation of Islam, with the greeting words of peace. We say it in the Arabic language, Assalamu Alaikum. I'm honored to serve as the student regional minister for the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Not title, just service. Yes, sir. We cannot be a people that allow titles to go to our head and make us drunk, mm. Mm. make us abusive, mm. make us think that we're better than someone. Yeah. A title is only given to give you a designation of your responsibility yeah. to serve people, to help them, and for those that you serve and help, for you to help the servant so they can help you. Yeah. So I'm thankful to Allah. Yeah. Or the Honorable Minister Louis Farrell. I'm thankful to Allah for his privilege, for his 
love that he shares with you and me. Every day he works tirelessly for the establishment of a nation of our own. And that is where we're going. So as I get ready to bring up, this brother is my friend in Islam. I love him. This is not an act up here. This is not a, uh, how would you say, a, a brotherhood where we say things to Come make on. you feel good. Come on, right? Come on. But we don't care about each other. Come on. No, no, no. Come on. My brother said to me and sent me a text, brother, I'll be in New York from the 19th to the 21st. And brother, on Sunday, I'm, I'm free and open. I said, okay, well, you ain't free and open now. <laughs> we had something scheduled, but we changed that. <laughs> you in New York, brother, man, you coming by the month. That's right. That's right. Oh, man, please. <laughs> to have him is to have our minister present from the West Coast. Come on now. Him and I have enjoyed brotherhood over these years. We've not been gangbanging or set tripping. Come on. <laughs> From New York to LA, LA to New York. Nothing but love. Come on. We've come through a process of the science of the mind together. Come on. That has made both of us better. Huh? But what really turns us on this is when we relate for that supreme wisdom. And from that understanding that we get from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, who is English Lesson C1. Mm. Oh, okay. huh? oh. He's the master of the linguistics of English. Yes. He's the master of taking the knot of the tongue of the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Right. He's the C to the B as the B is to the A. The A is Allah and the B is the messenger. The messenger is B1, but he's C1. Right. He may come after the B, but he's first among us. So we bring up a man who receives him constantly, consistently on the West Coast. Huh? Where he's at right now. That's right. Taking his time to convalesce, but his rendezvous with destiny is on his mind. We are on his mind. So the subject this morning that our student Western Regional Minister has, who is Jesus? And I love it, brother, because we, we, we wear that out here, brother. <laughs> Yo, I'm almost ready to take your subject with this brother. We bring him on in the last 15 minutes. Let's bring him on right <laughs> Brothers and sisters, if you saw the press conference on November the 16th, and those Christians or Hebrew Israelites or whoever, to disturb the hornet's nest by saying about our minister, brother, Minister Tony, when he spoke at Union Temple, mm -hmm. that the words that he said attributed that he now has made Jesus of 2,000 years ago his Lord and Savior. Well, <laughs> on October the 15th, from Newark, New Jersey, the Symphony Hall, right, did Mr. Right. Farrakhan make it plain yes, who the real Jesus is, yes. who the living Jesus is? no matter how old we get to be in this world's life, 
We don't have enough breath in our body to thank Almighty God, Allah, for not one of his servants. All of them was sent from the oneness of God. That's right. No matter where you are on this planet, the great three monotheistic religions believe that there is but one God. That's right. That's right. And in the oneness of that God, the three great all claim Abraham as their father. Right. The Jews say Abraham is our father. The Christians say, hold on, Abraham is our father too. <laughs> and the Muslims, hold on, wait, 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 that, that's our pappy too. <laughs> and if he is the foundation of the three greats, how did we get into this religious game, baby? Right, right. Uh -huh. I thank God for Abraham. I thank God for Moses. I thank him for the perfect reflection we have seen of God in a man, and that man was Jesus Christ. We thank God for Muhammad. May the peace and blessings of Almighty God Allah be upon these great and worthy servants of his. Oh, but today, oh, <laughs> oh today, I am honored I am so happy today, this year in 2018, with having a fool like Trump. <laughs> That's my dude. God is using him as his wrecking ball. All this bad news with Kim Jong-un. I came to New York begging Allah for the spirit of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan that I may bring you some good news. Huh. Don't we need some good news? Yes, sir. I mean, New York? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I came to bring you some good news. That good news is God loves the black man and woman in America so much that he came out of hiding places to come after us. Come on. I came to New York to tell you that in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, everything we read in this book, every scripture can be taken out, superimposed over America, and it's a perfect thing. I came to tell you that after 400 years of the worst treatment any human being has ever suffered on this planet that we are the true and chosen people of God. Come on. I came to tell you a man came. Come on now. He came as God promised Abraham he would come. Come on. I came to tell you a man came and he came as it was in the scripture of him that he would come as a thief in the night. Come on. Now. I came to tell you a man came in sinful flesh huh. to condemn sin in the flesh. He came from the east and his name is Master Har Muhammad. That man raised one from among us. He's a Georgia born black man. And his name is the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. He is alive and well. Hey. Oh, I hope y'all ready for some good news. We're going to have some fun today. That man, that Georgia born black man, was taught by God face to face. Mm. Think about it. Huh? That man, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, only had a fourth grade education, so he fulfills that part of scripture that reads like this. How is this man who's not lettered learned? Listen. Who taught him like? Come on. He only had a fourth grade education, but no scholar on this planet could defeat him in argument. Go ahead. Go ahead. The only thing you can say is, I just don't believe. But you couldn't say, I know better. Come on. Come on. What a man. 
Yeah. A Georgia born black man, his height was only five six, so he wasn't tall enough to put fear in you as a result of his height. <laughs> Listen. Oh, but he was tall in spirit and in knowledge. That's right. That's right. Oh, that Elijah Muhammad built a nation in America. Come on. No other leader has done what the most honorable Elijah Muhammad did in the 60s, in the 70s. That man built a nation. That's right. And brothers and sisters, his mind, his mind was imbued with the power similar to the womb of a woman. Mm. Mm. That from his mind, God impregnated the honorable Elijah Muhammad with so much wisdom that his teachings became a seed. Mm. Huh? <laughs> and from that wisdom, huh? We can say, for unto us mm. a child was born. Yeah. For unto us a son was given, and the womb that he was birthed in was New York. Oh, yeah. Come on. Yeah. oh New York, New York. Yeah. Huh? That man, in my humble opinion, Come on. he's the boldest black man anywhere to be found on this planet. You and I are so honored that I can stand behind Minister Farrakhan like a son would a father and go up against anybody and say, my daddy can whoop you, bro. <laughs> right. For the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, it is in their holy and righteous name that I greet my family here in the great city of New York. In the greeting words of peace, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam, sir. Brother Sister, how y'all doing? Fine, right, sir. Are sir. you sure? Yes, yes sir. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I thank Allah. I want to say on behalf of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and this little budding nation of Islam that you may take for granted, hmm. our enemy don't. Yes. Make it plain. This little budding nation of Islam that looks crude to you, <laughs> built with simple planks and nails, but when everything else is falling under the lives of this world, yes, yes, yes. oh, that nation of Islam is still flowing. Come on, come on, come on. I thank Allah that you would take time out of your schedule to come and hear what we know to be the life-giving teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. I'm so grateful to be in a city of a brother whom I love immensely that we grew up under the tutelage of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. I have always loved this brother and we, years ago, our dear brother Student Minister Abdul Hafiz Muhammad, we made a pledge that New York and LA would never gang name. Come on. Huh? Come on. Yeah, we love righteous competition. We would never say, I'm from New York, you from LA. No, I'm in the nation. That's right. That's right. That's right. If my nation status is bigger than a number status. Go ahead. Uh, and LA and New York, since he has been the minister, have had a great relationship. Uh, so it's an honor to be at Mars number seven, and I happen to be at a Mars number 27. Come on. But we have both the two and the seven together. <laughs> Uh, in LA, the head and the heart. Great. So I'm here to represent the head and the heart Great. of the nation of Islam. Thank you, Brother City of New York. And to the student regional laborers of this great city, thank you for being an example for the West because you all did something a couple of days ago that shook us. Mm. Come on now. Shook us a bit. It was like an earthquake. Oh. 
You showed your love for the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan through your Savior's Day dinner. Yes, sir. And you all in three hours raised over $102,000. Y'all all right, family? Yes, sir. So I thank you. I thank you from the bottom of my heart for receiving me. It's truly an honor, for I don't take you for granted. And today, I would like to talk to you about a subject that for the last few weeks in Los Angeles, I'm doing a lecture series on this subject. <laughs> Come on. I don't desire to preach at all. I'm sick of preaching. I desire to give you what the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has given to all of his student ministers. Today, you will get the semblance of a theology class. Mm. Come on now. I like that. Come on. And by Allah's grace, when you leave here today, you will get a better understanding on how to find black people and our struggle in the Bible. Come on. For this book, the Bible, is a book that our oppressors buried us in. This, and this is the book that we have to resurrect you from. That's right. <laughs> to build a bridge over into the Holy Quran. Beautiful. The question we ask, did not God and the prophets see black people coming into bondage in America? Come on now. That is a good question. Come on. Since my Christian pastors that I meet with in L.A., when I pose that question to them, pastors, don't God know what it was? <laughs> yes, Brother Wayne. <laughs> I said, do God know what he is? Of course. I said, then can God see down the wheels of time and see things before they happen? And he put it in the scripture as prophecy. Mm -hmm. The pastor said to me, absolutely, sir. <laughs> then I said, well, did God see black people coming into bondage in America? Then their mind go blank. Woo! It is. <laughs> Come on. And here we are in America. You got the right man when you have Jesus. Right. Listen. You just been given the wrong idea. <laughs> so the subject is, who is Jesus? And the question is, is that Jesus? No. <laughs> we really don't have a problem if it is Jesus. Right. But Jesus said, ye shall know the truth, and the truth what? <laughs> shall set or make you free. All we want is the truth. Right. If he was a crack, I mean a cocktail. <laughs> Y'all have to pardon me. Sometimes I get a little thuggy. I'm from L.A. <laughs> Boy, told a little blood cub, you know. You're gonna see it come out a little bit. We're gonna, we gonna have fun. Come on, if, if teaching is not fun, come on, man. It's not good at all. All right, listen. We're gonna laugh, we're gonna cry, you're gonna see things. Because today, we want you not hear what we said. Mm. Today, we want you to see what we said. Mm. Is that fellow Jesus? No, sir. Come on. That's what you are saying. See, you've been around the movies. <laughs> Take that picture into any elementary school. Mm. Right. Come on now. Right. Come on. Think about this. Clicker, because we getting ready to do something today. Yes, 
If you take that picture, if you take that picture into any elementary school and show it to our children mm. and ask them, who is this? What would they say? Jesus. Jesus. If you take that picture and go out on 125th Street and you set it on fire, Woo! That's what open up the harness, man. That's what I'm talking about. I'm burn Jesus. Then if that's not Jesus and you believe that's Jesus, what has happened to us? Huh. Good talk. So today, let's do a walk through history. Hmm. I want to start with something that's in the Bible where God promised Abraham. Yes, sir. Come on. Can we do that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're going to come back to y'all, the boy here. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted you to see him for the last time. <laughs> Come on, brother. Complete the surgery, my brother. Complete the surgery. God told Abraham something. Let's, let's see what it was. Listen at this. In the book of Genesis, chapter 15, verses 13 through 15. God has given Abraham some prophecy. Yes. Prophecy means he's telling Abraham something at that time, nearly 4,000 years ago. He's telling him something's going to happen in the future. Right. Let's read. And he said unto Abraham, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger. Shall be a what? Stranger. In a land that is not theirs. Yes, and shall serve them. And they shall afflict them for what? 400 years. 400 years. Huh. Listen to what God said. Oh, and also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge. And afterward they Come out with great substance. And thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace. In what? Peace. peace. Thou shalt be buried in a good old age. The question is, who is this seed that was going to go into bondage? Right. The question is, did we come into bondage? Yes, sir. Come on now, don't get scared. <laughs> Y'all got to talk black. Come on, come on. Yes, sir. Who is that in chain at the top right hand corner? <laughs> Look at all of those Caucasians standing around him. What are they doing? Come on, come on. They're bidding for him. Right. He's a slave. Then he said, they shall afflict him. Have we been afflicted? Oh, yes, sir. Look at the beating. Huh. Look at the hanging. That's a black female hanging from a bridge in Alabama. Yes, sir. Mm. Nobody want to talk about this for 400 years. We went under the worst treatment of any human being anywhere on the planet. Listen. So I say to any scholar, you can take that scripture and superimpose it over America and get a perfect fit. The question is, are we the seeds of Abraham? Come on. Good question. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I like New York. Y'all ain't scared. <laughs> now, let's see what else was supposed to happen to God's people. Follow me now. This is Deuteronomy. Chapter 7, verse 4. For they, look at what they're going to do to this people. 
for they will turn away thy sons from following me. God talking. Right. That they may serve other gods. Interesting. Come on, come on. Brothers and sisters, did we come here with a religion? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Some of y'all don't know, huh? <laughs> When white folks came to Africa with their ship called Jesus. That's right. The ship that brought us here was named Jesus. Come on. Huh? Come on. When they met black people, did we have names? Yes, sir. Did we have a religion? Yes, sir. Did we have a God? Yes, sir. But when we got here, did they let us keep it? No, sir. For they will turn away thy sons from following me, that they may serve other gods. Other gods. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly. Scripture. Come on. That's just scripture. Go get the preacher down the street. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> Him answer this question. Come on now. Because everybody, every ethnic group can talk about their suffering and get people to empathize, but nobody, not even us, come on, want to hear our struggle. You can even talk to black people about what happened and even they'll say, get over it. Ooh, think about it. Come on now. Negro. <laughs> but every year you cry for the Jews. Right. Make a play. But you won't cry for you. Ooh, think about that. Y'all all right? Yes, Come on. Sir. Let's see what else is going to happen. Break it up. Now, this is the book of Exodus. Dealing with the Ten Commandments. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Brothers and sisters, Egypt is not just a geographical location. Go ahead. Make it play. The word Egypt also means a place or condition of bondage. Go ahead. I'm gonna say it again. Come on. The word Egypt almost also means a place or a condition of bondage. Brother, if you lock your wife in the closet Listen. and won't let her out, you just put her in Egypt. <laughs> and when she get out, she gonna bust you. No. <laughs> Come on, sister, I'm feeling some kind of way. Ain't with me no Verse three: Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Listen. Have we accepted other gods? Mm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Are we still following the gods yes, of our ancestors? No, sir. No, we're not. No, we not. Awesome. Listen to what God said. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven images. <laughs> How many images you should make? None. None. Not even a cross. None. Make a play. I was on the plane coming here, brother our peace. And we went through some turbulence, and I saw a few crackers grab their cross. I said, that ain't going to help you. What do you mean? I said, you OK, because I'm on you, but I know my God. I know who controls the rain. That's right. That's right. That's right. Right here. Who do you think you are? God. No. Hey, see. See, back there. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven images or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Whew. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, hmm. nor serve them. This, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. I don't want you bowing down to no white folk. Come on, Come on now. Come on now. Huh? To that fella I just showed you, uh, we're going to get him out of you. Yes, sir. In a minute. 
That's right. Come on, brothers and sisters, be up. Even, even as Muslims, man, that stuff is so deeply and buried in us, it still bothers us. We just came through Christmas, and Brother Hafiz, and I find myself sometimes singing Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> God talking or John the Revelator talking and said and I saw and I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals and I heard as it were the noise of thunder one of the four beasts saying come and see hmm. look at this and I saw and behold a white horse and he that sat on him had a bow and a crown was given unto him and he went for conquering Hmm. And to conquer. This is Caucasian people. Yes, sir. Right, sir. Sit. That's Napoleon and Alexander the Great. Napoleon was such a conqueror Come on. that it was this Caucasian fellow that everywhere he went, he was so upset because our fathers left a sign that we had been everywhere he went. Yes, sir. Think about it. Huh? Come on. Yes, that cra I mean that Caucasian. <laughs> He lied 21 cannons yes. in front of the Sphinx. Because the Sphinx is the body of a lion, but the head of a black man sitting majestically. Yes. That's right. But our father wanted to let Caucasians and any other ethnic group know mm. uh, that this planet belonged to us. That's right. When we was in control of the Sphinx, we didn't call it the Sphinx. That's right. We call it Abu Hajj. Means the father of everything. Come on. But the conqueror, once he conquers something, he has the right to rename it. Come on. Because he's put it under his conquest. Huh? Come on. The body of a lion and the head of a black man. Good God Almighty. But that body of a lion is now in America. There's a lion sleeping in Judah. Who will wake up? And anybody that wake up can't be no pussy cat. Go ahead. Go ahead. Force of arms. 
winning the war, to conquer a foreign land, to overcome by force. Will we overcome by force? Yes, yes, sir. Subdue, conquer an enemy, to gain, win, or obtain by effect, personal appeal, etc. To gain a victory over, surmount, to master, to overcome. Have that happened to us? Yes, sir. Who conquered us? Caucasian. And when a man conquers you, he takes total control of your life. Come on. God allowed him to do it. Huh? Y'all all right? Yes, sir. In the Holy Quran, Surah 2, verse 30. Come on. The wise gods, the angels, was talking to God, and he said, I'm going to place a ruler in the earth. That's right, that's right. And the angels were like, wait a minute, now we're ruling right now, and you said, you're going to place another ruler? Come on. Come on. Then they asked him the question, well, what would you place in the earth except that which was caused mischief and the shedding of blood? God said, don't worry, I know what you know about. Huh. That's right. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Prophecy. See, you don't run into this because I'm trying to give you a lightweight theology plan. Come on. Many of us, because we know how to pronounce words, it don't mean you know what the words you pronounce it means. Go ahead. Oh, we some talk. Oh, we can talk. We can blood cuz and cipher each other to death. And then when I say, well, what does that mean? Oh. Uh, <laughs> Prophecy. Look at the definition of prophecy. The foretelling or prediction of what is to come. Right. So I say to the pastors, what part of the Bible is prophecy and what part is actual history? Come on, come on. Do you know that there is a historical Jesus? Yes, sir. But the historical Jesus talked about another one coming at the end of time. Right. Told you you were going to get a theology class. See, they got you locked into the historical Jesus. Right. 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 So that you won't be able to recognize the prophetical Jesus who's actually already here. Come on. Come on. Uh oh. Prophecy. Something that is declared by a prophet, especially a divinely inspired prediction, instruction, or exhortation. A divinely inspired utterance or revelation. Prophecy. See? We're dealing with right now the prophecy of the seed of Abraham. Yes, sir. All right. Let's let's see where we fall into this category. This is the original man. Can we bring this down some? When white folks met us, they found us in our original state. Y'all following me? Yes, sir. State meaning our mind. Now I'm using modern day terminology, because I know some of you wise cyphers, you know, I know you into Shabazz and come on, come on, you know, Asiatic, but let me have this today. <laughs> hey, hey, my brother. Uh, this is the original man. When we came here, many of us was practicing the religion of Yoruba. Islam, animism, animism meaning we believe we always believed in something spiritual. Yes, Even if we couldn't quite figure it out, we had names like Kunta, Bakari, Naira, Kwame, Shabazz. Yeah. Come on. That's how we came here with these kind of names. You know, we had colorful clothing, art, weaving, music, and drums. Come on. Oh, we love the drums. Yes, That's right. Our enemy made a law that no black African could play the Congo drum. Because they know even through the drums we can right. communicate. Right. Huh? We beat the drums and the white man, and then he see us just really going at it. He know that means something about him. We have language like Igbo, Swahili, 
We were sent up by a gunny. Jamie. Shalom alaikum. Come on. Shalom. We weren't speaking no English. English is a virus that was downloaded in the... We had Africa on our mind. That's why the Bible say we sat by the rivers of Babylon. There we wept. We looked over the Zion. We cried out with a mighty voice. We were slaves, but we were singing about the motherland. We were saying, swing low. Sweet cherry. Because we knew this was not home. These black people were beating the hell out of us. Come on now. Why swing low? Because a virus been downloaded, so I found it. I looked over Jordan. Which way is Jordan? East. And what did I see? A band of angels. Coming after me. Coming for the what? Y'all got weak on that. <laughs> this is our original state. What happened? Huh. Here's the virus. virus. <laughs> Why I can't get this thing? Hey. Now a germ. A virus was downloaded. Right. And this kind of state of mind took us into a sunken place. That's it. And now we can't get out. Teeth. What did he download into us? His religion, Christianity, Catholicism, Judaism, and many of us became atheists. We just said the hell with us. What else did he download? His name, we became Johnson. Williams, Cold Pepper. What the hell is a Cold Pepper? We became Mason. What else did he download into us? English, Spanish, French. Come on, come on. You can go to parts of Black Africa and these Negroes are speaking French. Parlez-vous français? That means that the European French conquered them. Right. What else did they download into us? Christmas, Easter, Halloween. And they did this to us for 400 years of conditioning us. And when we tried to come out of that, he beat it back into us so that became a germ or a virus. That's in our lesson. Yes, sir. Come on. That from us, that was a germ. Yeah. And from that germ, we produced another people. So let's go to the definition of a germ. Teeth. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. You think a germ is when somebody coughs it? <laughs> yeah, that's a physical germ, but what is a spiritual germ? Come on. What is a mental germ? Good teaching. I hope so. Germ. A microorganism, especially when disease produces. Mm -hmm. A bud, offshoot, or seed. The rudiment, check this out, of a living organism capable of producing an embryo in its early stages. Ooh. Meaning, from a germ, you can get a whole nother person. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Somebody that made a Frankenstein. 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 <laughs> what is a virus? Look at what a virus needs. A virus is an ultra microscopic huh, diameter, metabolical, inner, infectious agent that replicates only within the cell of a living host. Hmm. Come on. See, a virus needs something that is alive to attach itself to it. Come on. So when they downloaded their name into us, downloaded their religion into us, downloaded their language into us, we actually became white people. Listen. 
I know, I know. Say it loud. I hear all that. Come on, Tony. Y'all all right? Break it down. Break it down. What did that produce? See? What happened? Check this out. Can you shrink this a bit? I want to share something to you in psychiatry. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. Can I come down? Yes, sir. I feel I'm too far. I don't like being far from you. I want to be. Uh, this is much better. Check this out. You ever heard of Stockholm Syndrome? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good. Then you smart ones be quiet while I teach the rest. Yes, sir. Stockholm. Stockholm Syndrome is something that happened in Europe to some Caucasian people. Let's read it. The Stockholm Syndrome appears when an abused victim, when a what? You <laughs> have we been abused? Oh, yes, sir. Okay, good, good, good. When an abused victim develops a kind of respect and empathy toward their abuser. Yes, that's us. Listen now. Sisters know about this very well. It was named after a bank robbery in Stockholm when a group of bank employees was held hostage and developed a strong sense of empathy toward their captors. Wow, interesting. Sound like a Negro. <laughs> when this traumatic event was over, they even defended their captors. He brought them home. They did what? And I like the way y'all stand in security, man. Something go down? You know what? If something go down, I want y'all to stand down. I can't, I hope so. I wish somebody would get up out there and stand down. No, you can have a seat, bro. You can have a seat. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to upset you, bro. I, I can thump a little bit, too, man. You I'm in New York, boy. Y'all quick on the drum. Y'all all right? When this traumatic event was over, they even defended their captors, check this out, by not wanting to say anything that might endanger their captors' freedom. This is a mental disorder after being in bondage. Come on. This usually happens because, check this out, the victim sees the smallest act of, of uh, kindness and decent behavior as an extracting event which makes them see their captors as essentially good. Wow. So the white man said, you can drink from the same water. Wow. <laughs> so the white man said, you can come and go to school with us. Right. See, I told you. All white people ain't bad. Leave <laughs> my white people alone. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> this way, they leave aside all the negative behavioral distinctions of their captors and focus on the positive ones. This syndrome is also called traumatic bonding. Mm. Or victim brainwash. Guess how long they was held captive? Seven days. Now, if that happened for only seven days, what happened to a people for 400 years? Now, if that's called Stockholm Syndrome, well, hell, what done happened to us? What do you call that? There you go. Negro, coon, nigga. After 400 years, they grew. Remember that virus? It's capable of producing another human being. See, this is the original man falling away. And the white man grew out of us a nigga. A coon. Good 
Loving it, bro. Loving it. Yeah. And Sir, check this out. That's what God got to come out. Huh. Think about it. Great outfits. Yeah. What's been downloaded in here? <laughs> The Stockholm Syndrome by 4,000. Woo! <laughs> On crack, that's right. <laughs> Jesus is white, the good two fairies white, Santa Claus is white. Don't mess with my white people. Everything. I'm white. <laughs> Come on now. Teach. Minister yeah, Farrakhan go hard on white people. Here come the Negro defense attorney. Yeah. Oh. They don't have no defense, brother and sister. No. Now after this has happened, God told Abraham, after that time, I'm coming. Come on. Wow. Now this is a problem. I didn't say it. Book of Genesis said that God said he said. After that time, because look, what's going to happen to black people, it's going to take God. A prophet can't handle our condition. Make the plan. God said, I'm coming. I know, brothers and sisters, I know the virus that's been downloaded into you, the white man deleted out of us that God is a man. See? So white folks got you thinking God is a nothingness, yet you sitting here calling him he. True, true, true. If God don't exist, don't call him he. Call him it. Right. Call him that. Call him what? <laughs> but God is a man. I'm sorry. I got to bring you out of that sunken place. I can prove that God is a man. Go to the book of Genesis in the first chapter, verse 27. He said, come on, let us make man. How you going to make him, God, in my image? Hold on, white folks told me you didn't have an image. So when you ain't talking to white folks, I'm telling you I have an image. Or white folks out there done turned it like They've been following me, man. They don't like me. This used to be black hall. Come on, come on. Come on. Man, white people, what? Y'all all Y'all all right, family? Yes, sir. Ain't nobody tired, is it? No, no, sir. All right. I love y'all. No, you, sir. You too. I love you, sir. But this has been done. Yes, sir. What did God say? My sons have been taken and now they follow other gods. Mm -hmm. Right? We lost our name. We lost our language. Now when God show up, will we recognize him? Yes, Not unless he looked like our oppressor, who we be defending. Wow. Go ahead. Good teacher. Because we suffer from Stockholm syndrome. Yes, in a bad way. Come on. Which direction is God coming from? Now let's see. Here's Jesus talking. See, I, I pull down the scripture because in a lot of Bibles, the red part, that's Jesus talking. That's right. Let's think, look at what Jesus said. Then Jesus said to these Jews, Jesus had an argument with the Jews in the book of St. John's right, chapter 8. Yes, sir. The book of what? John 8. Chapter what? 8. Chapter what? eight. eight. They told me y'all was dumb, man. <laughs> <laughs> Just need the surgery, sir. Look, you get ready to see the Jews have always had problems. Yes. With Africans. <laughs> because Jesus is a black man. That's right. From Africa. Yes, you didn't know that? Look, then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Make you free. See, when you're set free, that means somebody let you go. When you're made free, that means you broke away. Go ahead. 
strength. Somebody set us free. We broke away in the nature. That's right. Make it plain. Listen now. Now he said, look at what they answered. They answered him. They answered him. They said these words. We be Abraham's seed. We were never in bondage to any man. Think about it. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Jesus, oh, oh okay, chumps. <laughs> we didn't say chumps. That's my, that's my hood and modification. <laughs> Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin. And the servant abided not in the house forever, but the son abided ever. If the son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. I know that ye are Abraham's seeds, but ye seek to kill me because my word have no place in you. I wonder who the Jews seek to kill today. Oh. Come on now. Who do the Jews have a beef with today? Why? He don't have no weapons. All he do is speak the truth, but his words can't find no place in them. Ah, that's right. I speak that which I have seen with my father, huh. and you do that which you have seen with your father. But this stuff, it gets heavy. They answered and said unto him, now, now they want to, now they argue with Jesus. Come on. They answered, said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said unto them, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me, a man that have told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. You do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, check them out. Come on now. Now they get ready, ready, ready to hit him below the gun. <laughs> come on, come on. Look at what they said. Then they said to him, we be not born of fornication. Oh, come on. Come on. Mm. Listen. Mm. What did the Jews know about the birth of Jesus? Listen. Ah. That he was born outside of the Jewish law. Mm. I know. I, ain't gonna, I can't go into this today. I know y'all think God impregnated Mary. <laughs> That's not true. Come on. I'll show you at another time. That Jesus have a genealogy tree. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. But we ain't gonna go into that. We have one father, even God. Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear. Now check this out. You get ready to see something that the white man have been called the devil for a long time. Yes, Didn't start with the nation. Come on. <laughs> when I show the preachers this, many of them damn near throw up. <laughs> I, I got a problem with the nation. Y'all call white people the devil. Well, they not arguing you up. Think about it. Verse 24. Jesus got tired of all of this talk. Come on, come on. Jesus said, okay, ye are of your father, the devil. Come on. Now remember, Jesus was in Europe. He was in Rome. He wasn't in Africa. He was in Rome trying to help white folks. Mm. And it was the Roman authorities who arrested him and murdered him. But Jesus said, you are of your father, the devil. He didn't stop. Then he said, and the lust of your father you will do. Now he's giving him his father's history. Your father, he was a murderer from the beginning. No, Jesus knew something about the book of Revelation, that white horse going out. Come on. And abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own trump. I mean, <laughs> for he is a liar and the father of lies. One of the preachers tried 
tried to tell me that was the Jews, I said, but look at what the Jews say. They said they ain't never been in bondage. Come on. But we have. Yes. Where's this God to come from? Y'all all right? Yes, yes, sir. You got your paper pencil out? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on. Now we're going to go to the book of Habakkuk. Book of what? Habakkuk. In the book of Habakkuk, yeah. Oh, see this man? Yes, Come on. Yes, Just keep looking at him. Habakkuk gave this prophecy. Habakkuk 3, uh, 3 through 7. God came from where? T-Man. T-Man. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. God came from where? T-Man. What? And who is T-Man? See a Negro on him? <laughs> God came from T-Man. T-Man was one of the sons of Ada. Come on. But the Holy One came from Mount Paran. Mount Paran is right here in Saudi Arabia. This is the area of Mount Paran. Right outside of Mecca. Come on. See, God came from T-Man, but the Holy One, now that's who got the power. Come on, come on came from Mount Paran. His glory covered the heavens and the earth. Huh. This man right here, yes. this master of pride, Muhammad, came from this area. <laughs> Look at what he did. And his brightness was as a light. He had horns coming out of his hands, and there was the hiding of his power. Before him went pestilence and burning coals went forth at his feet. Look at what he did. He stood and measured the earth. When this man showed up, he came with a book called Supreme Wisdom. In 1930, and he gave us that book which has our property deed in it. He came to America. Black men, look at you over here acting other than yourself. Like you don't own nothing. Sir? <laughs> You're the original man, the Asiatic black man. You're the maker, the owner. What? He stood and measured. He gave us the measurements of the earth. He told us that the earth was 196,940,000 square miles. He said a land covered 57,255,000 square miles. He said a water covered 139,685,000 square miles. Right? Come on. He said the hills and mountains covered 14 million square miles. The lakes and rivers covered one million. Then he said, the earth weighs six, seven trillion tons, and the human body about 21 cycles. He gave that to Elijah, and the FBI took it. And then they put it in their books, and they put the same measurements that he gave to Elijah now in their damn history books. Y'all all right? That's right. Watch it up. Yes, ma'am. I'm gonna take my time and hurry up. <laughs> you know, I, with, with social media, I, our attention span ain't for 60 seconds. <laughs> Thank you, brother. I'll take two. Yes, sir. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. Oh, I love it. See, I like classroom sets. That's yes, right. Sir. Y'all okay? Huh? Yes, sir. Okay, I see the pads now. Here we go. This is Jesus talking in the book of Matthew. Jesus, Matthew 27. For as lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. He's talking to his disciples. Then Jesus, he saw a miracle. Come on. He said, for wheresoever the caucus is, there will the eagles be gathered together. What is the symbol of America? Eagle. It's an eagle. Who is the caucus? See, when you listen to that spiritual talk, we know what a physical caucus is, but what's a spiritual caucus? Come on. What's a mental caucus? Right. A spiritual caucus is anyone who has been unplugged from their God. Huh. A mental caucus is anyone who've had their history erased, their names erased, Go ahead. their language erased. They are a caucus. Come on now. Yeah. 
And the eagle is a predator animal. It takes advantage of the prey from on high. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Peace, my man. Oh, huh? Come on now. Y'all all right? Yes, yes, sir. sir. A man was supposed to come with a title, the son of man. Here he is. Yes, yes sir. sir. Master Farad Muhammad, his mother was Caucasian and his father was a blue, black, black man. Yes, <laughs> he was specially made to come after us in 1930. He came in sinful flesh. Because we were worshiping white folks. Come on. He came pretending that he was a salesman knocking on our door. And when sisters would see the man, oh, ooh, he got good hair. <laughs> we would open the door. He said, I am your brother from the evening. Brother. <laughs> And he would start teaching us who we were. That's right. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. John 16. Listen at this now. Jesus talking. See, you got to know who Jesus is. Yes, sir. I did this to white people. I gave them this same PowerPoint. They broke down crying. Oh, that's this teachings is impenetrable. That's right. And look, man, even when you teach them, you ain't got to have no hatred. That's and right. all in your heart. Just have a love for God. That's right. That's right. Because a white man is doing what he's supposed to do by nature. I can't blame him. He's supposed to have a foot in our behind if we let him. You can't tell a chicken hawk not to chase chickens. Chicken hawk in his nature, he's supposed to go after chicken. You can't tell an ant eater to eat roaches. They eat us enough. I ain't, I mean, I mean ants. I might eat a bean, but I'm gonna eat ants. Listen at these words. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. This is Jesus talking to his disciples. He said, it's expedient for you that I go away. Listen. Right. Right. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. Hold on, Jesus. He didn't say, I'm the comforter. Right. Listen. He said, the comforter cannot come unto you. The disciples was looking just like some of y'all looking, perplexed. <laughs> The comforter will not come unto you, but if I depart, I will send him unto you. All right. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they believe not on me. Who is it that don't believe on a black Jesus? Come on, come on, come on. You believe in that other virus I showed you that I'm constantly trying to get up out of you. That virus, go ahead. Brothers and sisters, I'm downloading into you virus protection today. So if you don't want me to complete this download, you better get up and leave. No, you ain't getting up here. Lock the door. Ain't nobody in here. You're under arrest. And Jesus, now here we go. Back to where we started. When he came, this is who he got to deal with. Mm. Mm. Think about it. Mm. And Jesus said unto him, this day oh, is salvation come to this house. Uh, for so much as he also is a son of Abraham. Back to that promise now. Look at what happened to Abraham's seed. Who's came after Abraham's seed? For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which is lost. Oh. Oh. Here we are. That's right. What did you lose, black man? Huh. Everything. Everything. Oh, God. That cracker unplugged me from the source of life. Before white folks found us, man, we had already built civilization. Huh? We had a language. 
language. We had a government, man. We were ruling. Brother, you was a king. And sister, you was a queen. We couldn't even be a king if you wasn't a king. That's right. Come on. Huh? Make a play. We built the pyramids. They don't even know the mathematics we use. Not even today. Right. So when white folks can't figure something out, they call it a wonder. Right. They wonder how the hell you do it. Right. We only gave them one book of mathematics. And we hid the other 59,999. If we'd have gave them them damn books, wouldn't be no hope for us. He come to seek and save what? That comes from us. Are we in a sunken place? Oh, yes, sir. The Bible, Jesus described our position, our condition as the bottom rail. Huh. But when he come, the spirit of truth, he will take that which is at the bottom and do what? Bring it to the top. Bring it to the top. That's what Brother Farrell said. That's right. That's he right. said, I'm going to take the tail and make it the what? Yeah. Hey, you don't even want to follow no black nigga. I ain't following no nigga. That's what I want Ain't no nigga gonna lead me no damn way. Right. You ain't getting that now. Come on. Now he got a deal with a download. He's got a deal with a cat calling himself Johnson, Smith, Washington, Adams, Cole Pepper. He's speaking English, he's speaking French, he's speaking Spanish. So he had to learn. Speak 18 languages and write 10. Yes, because his people were spread all over the earth. 16. Thank you. Thank you. He spelt 16 and can write 10. Okay, I want to make a correction. Because no mistakes can be tolerated. It wasn't 18, it was 16. I knew that I was just checking this now. I was just checking this now. The Negro came on up in there. <laughs> Told y'all I was still a little sick, right? <laughs> right. Y'all having fun? Oh, yes, sir. Come on, Doc. Doing the work. Here we go. Doing the work. How long was he here? It's written on how long he was supposed to be among us. In the book of Matthew, chapter 12, verse 40, for as Jonah was three days and three nights in the well's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. This man taught the honorable Elijah Muhammad for three and one half years and he left. Right. right. He left. He didn't stick around and say, I want black people's money. <laughs> Listen. Because where he going, his, your money ain't one need. Right. 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 He went back to Jerusalem. I'm not on talking about what Netanyahu is. That ain't nothing. The Jerusalem he's on moves around. The Jerusalem that he's on is in the sky. The Jerusalem that he's on is called the wheel. White man tell you about it, but he catch you while you sleep. In a movie called Independence Day. What did he come to do? See, God is telling you what I came to do in the book of Deuteronomy. Look at the Lord talking. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thine brother, like unto me. Now, Deuteronomy, God is talking to Moses. Right. Telling Moses, when I find him, I'm going to raise one from among them like you. So in order to have a man like Moses, you need a people in a condition like the children of Israel. He's telling Moses, I'm going to raise one like you. I told the preachers, we should be looking for a man like Moses. But you got to know something about Moses. Moses did not have a former education in Egypt. That's right. If you read the Bible, they said Moses couldn't speak his oppressor's language well. Right. He had a knot in his tongue. So did Elijah. That's right. Come on now. Huh? Come on. Come on. No schools could say they produced Moses. Moses talked to God face to face in the act of a burning bush. Yeah. Wasn't no damn bush on fire. 
the burning bush represented the anger of God over the condition of the children of Israel. So we're supposed to be looking for a man like Moses. Guess what? That means he ain't coming from Harvard. Come on. He ain't coming from here. And he ain't going to come from Morehouse. Because Morehouse don't make me. Okay. Don't get it twisted. Man, I better stop brothers like me. He's doing that too damn good. Don't get it twisted, brother. I'm, I'm straight up mine. She's straight up, Did you know Morehouse College called Minister Farrakhan? Because 40% of the men was going to class with stilettos on. I love Morehouse is a good school. It's producing giants, but I think they make more Negroes than they make leaders. Let's get back to God. Y'all got caught up on that one. You, you do better sending your son to spell me. Wow. 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 Not hear again the voice of the Lord my God. Neither let me see this great fire any more that I die not. And the Lord said unto thee, They have well spoken that which they have spoken. I will raise them up a prophet from among thy brethren like unto thee. And will put my words in his mouth. Come on. And he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. This man taught this man. That's right. That's right. Now I got closes out, but I will send you Elijah. What would Elijah do? He would turn the hearts of the children back to the father. And the hearts of the father back to the children. Lest I smite the earth with a curse. The Jews are looking for Elijah, and they know he showed up. They just can't follow our Elijah. Right? Oh, you lied to Muhammad. I'm trying to introduce you to the real Jesus. Y'all all right? Yes, you know what, brother and sister? We are the only ethnic group that follows deities that don't look like us. Think of this. Revelation. Now, Elijah was turned to the junk pile called Negroes. Huh. Revelation, first chapter. Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy. What does prophecy mean? That which will happen at a future time. And keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. John to the seven churches which are in Asia. Grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come and from the seven spirits which are before his throne and from Jesus Christ who is, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of what? The dead. Huh. He's the first what? Begotten of the dead. But what day? Right. The day of what I showed you. This right. day. This day. That's right. This day. Right. There's two deaths before physical death. Come on. When a man take your God, how did he kill you? Spirit. When a man erase your name, your language, and your culture, he murdered you what? Mentally. He did two things to you. Then he put in his constitution, since I've done these things to these niggas, they're the three-fifths of a human being. Yes, he did. He knew what he did. Didn't they say we were three-fifths? Oh, yes, he knew it because he took two things from us. And in order to make that fraction a whole again, we got to be turned back to the Father, back to our language, back to our God. I don't know if 
black, white, he fight, they rose up on their feet. Mm. Yes. Right. That were Muslim scholars from Saudi Arabia sent me down, saying, you all must come and teach us. Yes. Mm. Wow. Yes. I've never heard exegesis the way you have it. Yes, sir. Mm. True. And we're being rose to the top, man. Yeah. We're not taking no second place yeah. to nobody. Yeah. <laughs> I boast in the Lord. Even when I'm in, I don't play with them. I don't try to hurt their feet. But I speak straight words. But I learn their language so that I can speak grammatically correct to them. So they got a way out too. White man, how can I get out of this? I said, go ahead and steal all the gold y'all took from us in the night. <laughs> I can't do that, buddy. <laughs> I like what you're saying, you're absolutely correct. But I didn't have nothing to do with your slavery. I said, yeah, we, we was told that we wouldn't have an attitude like you. But the Bible told me to tell you that the sins of the father will be visited on the children. All right. Y'all all right? I quote. Here is our trinity. <laughs> this man, Master Farad Muhammad, God in person, not his body, not the body, just like you are not your body. What? Just listen, listen to me. Every one of you sitting in here, you are inside of your body. Listen. Listen. So when you're looking in the mirror, getting all beside yourself, <laughs> that's not you. Just like your car. It's like a body. You get inside of it, you turn it on, and it moves you around New York. But you don't take it in your bedroom. So when your body gets worn out by the spirit of your energy, and over time, your energy, the body can't hold it no more. It has to give it up. Right. Then the body goes where? Back to the earth. Where do you go? Let's see the essence of you. How much brain does the original man have? And how much brain power does the colored man have? You have what? Seven and a half ounces of brain? See, look, of brain. The brain weighs, the average brain weighs four pounds. What is that that weighs seven and a half ounces? The energy. Right. Right. If we could take the energy in your body and put it on a scale, it would be a look, energy has matter. Right. Right. And matter takes up space and time. And if matter has a physicality attached to it, it can be weighed. Yes. So the original man has seven and a half ounces of brain. That's your spirit. See? You see my hand move? What moved it? That's right. Come on now. You got eyes? But what's doing the looking? Because the eyes by themselves can't see nothing. You ever seen a corpse, the eyes still open? You be like, close them, think you can see. Can't see. <laughs> you got eyes? Can you see me? What's doing the looking? Do you know you don't even need your eyes to see, really? Mm. How many of us ever been to Mount Marion? Raise your hand. Have you ever seen that dome? Yes, sir. Go there right now. 
Did you make it there? Yes. How fast did you travel? Right. Who told you you needed an airplane? Oh, this man, this man, this yeah. man. <laughs> See, what's inside of him, it is the originator. Huh? He comes with the full power of the originator of the heavens and the earth. And he gave that power to the Mahdi, this man. He is the exalted Christ. And from these two, they gave birth to their spirit in this man. If you don't believe me, just keep watching history, looking at Brother Farrakhan. He's got a rendezvous with the Jews. They right now working on having him arrested. Just like they had Jesus arrested. I, I, I'm not sorry to tell you, these are our three. That's the Father, that's the Son, that is their spirit. Why don't you join the nation of Islam? Thank you, brothers and sisters. For our praise and applause. Hell, I bless you. And my Greek went to you. I said, I'm going to Y'all all right, family? Did you learn anything? Yes, sir. Have a seat.